Hello everyone, welcome to our session today about the evolution of virus at all collections. This is Ismail from the customer success team in Virusotl. Now we're part of Google Cloud. I welcome you all today for this session. I want to um, be clear, please, any feedback or any kind of question that may arise during this conversation, uh, please pause it and we'll be answering them in the at the end of the of the talk. No, I'm gonna leave you on the hands of of the on the capable hands of my colleague Alexandra. All well, welcome, Alexandra. Hello, welcome to this webinar. My name is Alexandra Martin, and I work as a customer success manager at Virus Total. And today we will talk about Virus Total's collections, a project that we launched some time ago and we continued improving it. So... Okay, and here we have the agenda. We will start with an overview of VT collections, then we will see three use cases for stock analyst, threat hunting and red teaming, and we will end with the conclusions. Perfect, so let's see what collections are. Well, some time ago we launched VD Collections to allow users to organize and share knowledge based mostly on IOCs. But VT has continued improving it because the idea is to extend collections boundaries and evolve the concept from a simple set of IOCs to attacks campaigns and also to collaborative investigations. To do so, we added new features such for instance victimology based on geography and industry, attribution to one or multiple threat actors, OSINT references, and much more. But let's see it on the platform. So, if we go to intelligence, threat landscape, here we have the entire list of collections available in virus total. On this tab, we have the threat actors. For collections, we can sort by a lot of options here, and we can also filter by. It is important to highlight here that, for instance, collections name and owner name are case sensitive. It is also important to know that you can filter by some to taxonomy. Here, on threat categories, and here you can see the, uh, see the options. You can also filter by victimology, including targeted region, and you have here the countries, and also by targeted industries, and here are the industries. Let's check for instance the energy one. And to make sure that we will have the attribution of our collections, let's insert here APT. Here we go. So let's check the first one the first collection here we have the name here some relevant dates here then the owner the threat actor the targeted industries the targeted regions here we have a set of tags associated to the collection and then we have the description at the top here we can share the collection export the iocs as json csv and sticks and we can also be able to VT graph by clicking here. Then we have here six tabs, right? The first one is the IOCs one, and here we can see the list, the entire list of IOCs that are included in the collection. So, for instance, here we have URLs, domains, and files. And this works in the same way as VT Intelligence does. So it has the same options here. The second tab is the Commonalities tab. And this is a very powerful tool that shows you features that are common to several samples. So for instance, let's check this one. Here we have four files that are contacting this domain. So if we click on this number, we will see the list of files contacting that domain in VT Intelligence for further analysis. Then, if we click on the domain name, we will have three options. The first one 
will show you the report of the domain. The second one will do the same as by clicking here. And the third one shows you all files in VT contacting the domain even though they don't belong to the collection. So it is useful to detect other files that could provide you a more complete picture of the attack. Okay. Then the information here is shown or it is distributed through several sections. Here we have the sections on the table of contents. The first one is the detections one. And here you can see the summary, the popular thread category, the popular thread name, browser rules, uh, tags, and attack techniques. The next section, distribution vectors. And here you can see email parents in the wide URLs, compressed parents, and so on. Next one, thread network infrastructure. And here we can see relationships between files and network entities. Okay, next, similarity hashes. And this is about clustering that is based on different algorithms. And it is very useful, for instance, to identify samples that look similar or behave in a similar way. Next one is execution tracing. And here we can see details regarding sample behavior based on uh, sandbox detonations. And the last one is the static analysis. And this is about metadata, signatures, sample geometries, certificates, and so on. Okay. But we don't have commonalities only for files, right? We have commonalities also for domains, URLs, and IP addresses, if any, but in this case, we don't have API, uh, API addresses for this collection. Okay. The third tab here is the rules one, and here you can see all the Yaya, Sigma, and IDS rule that are matching any sample in the collection. So for instance, you can use this button to see the rule, right? And here you can copy it and you can also download it to include it in another um, platform that you may use. And you can also interact with VT hunting by importing the rule into live hunt and also into retro hunt. Then you have this button here to check other files in VT that are matching this Yara rule. Next up, the TTP swan. This tab can show you the subset of samples that are using any MITRE technique so that you can understand the behavior of the attack behind this collection. So for instance, let's say that you would like to know how this attack uses the native API. Well, instead of checking all the files belonging to the collection, you can just click here and check the only two files that are using this technique. Next up, the graph one. And here you can explore in various total graph the relationships between the IOCs included in the collection. And you can also expand those relationships and go for further analysis. And the last tab here is the community one. And here you can see all the reports, all the external reports related to this collection. And here you can see also the user's comments. Now let's see some threat actors. So here we have the list of threat actors available in Virus Total, and here we have also the option for sorting and for filtering. But let's see, for instance, this threat actor, right? And here we have the name and where he comes from or where is it based. Then we have here the suspected sponsor, the targeted industries. We have here the description, some aliases, suspected victims, and here we have four tabs. The first one shows you the list of collections related to this threat actor. Okay. And you can sort by and filter by here. The second tab is about the IOCs related to this threat actor. And we have here 
IP addresses, URLs, domains, and also files. And this works in the same way as Bit Intelligence does with the same options here. Then we have the DDBs tab so that we can better understand the behavior of the threat actor. And the last one is the community tab. And here we have all the external reports regarding this threat actor. And here we could have the user's comments. And before moving on to the use cases, there are certain points to be clarified. First one, where collections come from? There are specific users with privileges to create them, but there are also automatically generated collections. Some auto-generated collections are based on publications from security vendors, while other ones are based on crowdsourced DRA rules. At the moment, we are working with a set of selected providers. However, the list is constantly increasing. The second one, who has access to them? At the moment, we are providing access to a limited number of users, typically security experts that are collaborating with VirusTotal. And this is because we would like to keep the data as clean as possible. However, we are slowly adding more users, as for instance, do it and enterprise customers. Next one, how can I create collections? This can be done manually in the web interface and also via the third version of the VT API. So for instance, in the main page, you have here this button and then you can go to collections and here you can create one. Another option is by using VT search, VT intelligence search, uh, select the IOCs you would like to include uh, in the collection and then go to tools, add to collection and to create a new collection. And the last option is through VTGraph. So from VTGraph you have this option here, file and export as VT collection. Add a new collection and that's it. Okay. Next one, how would I benefit from creating collections? The main benefits are that you can better organize your IOCs and it allows you to work with massive amount of indicators. This is very difficult to achieve in VT without VT collections, but now you can have everything together in the same platform. And the most important is that everything is actionable. So you can click everywhere and relationships are shown to you and also you can share your findings with your team and uh, you can work with them in a collaborative way and the last point here about threat actors there's no way to manually create a threat actor card so from vt we are mapping threat actors based on industry standards such as mitre and nis and now we are ready to go through the use cases and Isma will show you the first one. Thank you, Alex. Moving to the first use case, we have to situate ourselves in the security analyst position and think that we are this guy. So this SOC analyst is using their CM to investigate potential security breaches in their infrastructure. He finds that there is a suspicious file on an endpoint that is categorized as malware by 53 out of 69 antivirus vendors that are integrated in VirusTotal. Still, the SOC analyst decides to look up the hash in VirusTotal to find more context about it. From there, he sees that the, this hash, this file, is part of a VT collection called COVID malware. And this malware is associated with a threat actor, which is Cobalt. Now, this SOC analyst knows that they are not being targeted by a script kitty, but a real threat, which is this APT. Still, he decides to investigate further and go to more, reach to more collections that are related to this threat actor. 
which are Lokibot, Pony, and Cobalt Strike. So from there, this SOC analyst will be able to get rules like ideas rules, sigma rules, yar rules, and IOCs such as hashes, tommins, IPs from the COVID malware family, Lockybot family, the Pony malware family, and Cobalt Strike. We're going to see here uh, right now in a demo how it would be done in VirusSoto. This is a clear example of when you have tactical intelligence, in this case, a single IOC, and decide to use VirusSoto to reach the strategical intelligence, which will be for more uh, interesting for C-level, for reporting, and so on. So let's go. This is the file that has been found in the endpoint. This is a DLL. We can see here that there are some YAR rules and sandbox detections, but we go to the community tab. From here, we can see that this file has been talked about by different authors in different reports. If we go down, we're going to find that this file is contained in two collections, Cobalt Group and Coven Collection, the one we were talking about before, and that is related to Cobalt. In this case, we can check the collection and see there. There are 60 file hashes. There are some commonalities uh, that are shared between them and that you can use to build your rules, to get rules like, for instance, you can see here that there's a Yara rule that gets 44 items. There's another one that gets 40 items, some tags, TTPs, and so on. URLs that, it's, that are being contacted in the wild. Rules that are being, uh, that are detecting this malware, all these IOCs, those files, you can see that there's this rule that we were seeing before. We've got Sigma rules for its behavior. We've got the TTPs. We've got craft and community for more reports and comments. Here, it is interesting to see the description of this malware family, which tell us about it. In this case, we can get insights that this is a self-developed backdoor of the Cobalt group, which is a very interesting example. Why? Because threat actors um, are getting used to using open source uh, tools or shared tools or bug tools that are being used by other threat actors to avoid attribution. In this case, we know that this is being self-developed, so we could be sure that this is uh, a malware related to Covent. The model Arturo has capabilities to collect initial intelligence information about the compromised machine and stream video from its desktop. If the operator decides that the system is of interest, the backdoor will download and launch Cobalt Strike Framework Stager. So from here, just a few clicks, we could get all these insights. We know that regarding the TTPs, where we are in this, uh, in this compromise, we know that uh, so, uh, as long as nothing else is detected, we're at the beginning, practically the beginning of the attack. So from here, we can jump to the threat actor. See more collections that are related to them. So now you know that um, the IOC that you found in your infrastructure is re related to a, a first stage, checking their TTPs too. But we can get to the TTPs here. We can see how the attack is going to evolve based on this threat actor normal activity. We can see other families that are being used by the uh, threat actor and get more IOCs and more intelligence from there. We can already ingest these IOCs such as files, domains, and so, to, to our security stack to start blocking as soon as possible. And we got here more reports in case we are interested in this threat actor. We can also see this information through VTGraph, which is very useful when you want to see this uh, graphically or you want to share it in a report to C-level or upper management. So from here, we can see that this is 
the file we were looking for. So this is the collection and the other collection. So if we click on here, we can easily see that this file has a, is inside of a collection which is Covent, which is related to the threat actor Cobalt. And from here, we can expand the threat actor. Of course, we can see other information, such as the compressed parent from the where the file came, uh, a contacted domain, which is uh, being used as command and control. And right here, we've got all the other collections that this Cobalt threat actor is using. Let's see that we can align them vertically and as you can see here let's put this down we can see all the other malware that this threat actor is using the same as we were seeing before but here you can see that the investigation could be done way much faster and can be seen way easily thank you i'm going to give uh, alexa uh, alexandra the the world. Thank you, Isa. So from my side, I would like to show you a threat hunting use case focused on the same industry as our last report. So it is about the government industry and I will start from a strategical point of view. So let's say that I am in an European government industry and I would like to dig into the information provided by VirusTotal to detect new threats or indicators that I should monitor to keep the security up to date. In this case, I would start by checking the collections available in VirusTotal that are targeting government industry. To do so, we go again to Intelligence Threat Landscape. And here we can filter by targeted industries, government one. Okay, so I wouldn't filter by region even though it is possible. Instead of that, I would like to see the entire picture because of the direct and indirect relationships between countries. But I will filter by creation date just for demo purposes. So let's check here the last year. Okay. And here we have all the results. Perfect. Uh, we could go through all of them, but there's one specific collection that caught my attention and I wanted to show to you. So let's uh, check this Turla collection. Turla's new phishing based reconnaissance campaign in Eastern Europe. And what's really interesting here is that it's a very different collection when it comes to the number of IRCs. We usually see collections with lots of IRCs but uh, there may be others that are much more specific and targeted and although they don't make much noise they can be just as dangerous as the biggest one so for instance here we have a collection with only two files the first one is included in the vt data set while the second one is not so here we have just a, a hash uh, but vt allows you to add also these hashes and if uh, later on we receive the sample, it will be automatically linked here. This collection also help us through the community reports. So if we read these reports, we will better understand the behavior and the goal of this reconnaissance campaign. So... It seems that every target of the campaign receives an email with a link that downloads a docx file. When the victim opens the file, the document loads a remote unique PNG file, which is hosted in the attacker's infrastructure. This is done without any macro, which could be easily detected by any AV vendor or blocked via GPUs. Instead of that, the attackers have inserted the image through file codes. In this case, the file code they have used is the include picture one and they are using a remote image hosted on the attacker's server which is fetched via HTTP. Then 
through observer logs they can find, for instance, when the document was opened, the source or the victim's IP address, and also the version and the type of the Word application that the victim is using. Since they are not delivering any other malware to the victim, we can assume that this is done only for reconnaissance purposes. Now, the next step would be, for instance, to take the appropriate actions to detect if there are any internal victims. Also, to proactively define monitoring measures for further activity detection or protection and to patch or fix the world applications used internally, which could be used as a new attack entry point. And since it is a reconnaissance phase, probably uh, the victims will be attacked again by the same threat actor, probably by taking advantage of the specific world application they are using. So what could be interesting to do is to further investigate the threat actor and search for their modus operandi in previous campaigns and to improve the detection and protection capabilities based on the new findings. If there was any other reconnaissance event in the past followed by an attack, maybe they will use the same steps. Therefore, we can learn from it to anticipate what they could do in the future. So let's see this. From here, we can check the tour last threat actor card. And here we have all the collections associated to it. Okay, but we are interested in reconnaissance campaigns. So let's check it. Recon, okay. And here we have a sample. Um, well, it could work, so let's check the graph here. Let's open it. And here we have all the ISCs and their relationships. And let's check all of them. And then expand the collections. Okay, here we go. Here we have two collections, right? And it seems that the, this one is our collections, this first collection here, and this one is a new one. So the next step to do is to investigate if this collection is really related to this one, and maybe we can find some modus operandi that we can use for our further detection of this specific Thread actor. Perfect. And as for learnings, I would like to highlight the importance of the collections in terms of them being a source of creative data and strategic intelligence. For instance, in this case, keep in mind that in normal VT you only have one single file related to the campaign along with many other files totally unrelated. Also notice that this file's relationship graph is not so extensive and you cannot necessarily identify at a glaze its association to a government targeted campaign. However, collections offer additional insights to identify the smallest relevant spot that can reveal an entire campaign with an incredible value. And through the strategic intelligence it offers, you can even learn how to anticipate attacks. And Isma, it's your turn now. Wow, what an awesome use case, Alexandra. I personally loved it, and I think everyone here watching us today loved it too. So, before moving to the last use case, which is focused on red teamers and pen testers, I would advise you to post your questions or feedback while we are doing this presentation, and we'll be answering them in a few minutes after this use case. So, if we focus on red teamers and pen testers about how they can use 50 collections, we must 
Think first about their methodology, which is composed on five steps. Starting from intelligence gathering, moving to threat modeling, then vulnerability analysis. And I think it's worth mentioning here that many pen testers or red teamers, when they're doing their exercises, they forget about threat modeling. They go straight from gathering intelligence of their objective uh, to analyze vulnerabilities of it. Uh, but we have to remember that a red team exercise is not about humiliating the blue team or show how uh, good hacker you are, but instead it's about actually simulating an actual threat threat or a menace to our organization. Moving from vulnerability analysis, we go to exploitation in which a vulnerability is exploited and then to post-exploitation where uh, the pen tester or red teamer uh, basically establish a foothold in the system or the network, uh, they move laterally or they exfiltrate data. And that's how the cycle of this methodology uh, is round. Well, FireSettle has been useful uh, for red teamers traditionally when it came to intelligence gathering, uh, by which you could get passive DNS information, who is information, subdomains, URLs from your target uh, in a passive way, so you wouldn't be uh, alerting your target by interacting with them. Also, FireSettle uh, allowed you to get uh, to look for specific assets of your target and check for uh, metadata such as the um, framework version and see if they, uh, if they are using a vulnerable framework. It could also help you when it came to exploitation. Uh, so you could get uh, uh, exploits, malware, or you could actually get the pickup file of a specific malware and study their behavior when it came to the, uh, to the network and uh, try to mimic it. But now Firesolo, uh, when it has added the VT collections and threat actors, has filled the threat modeling stage. Uh, why? We'll, we're going to see here in the next demo. In this case, we're going from strategical information to a more tactical intelligence. Our target is going to be the British government. So let's see what can we get in Firesolo if we try to get information about a threat actor targeting the British government, and we try to mimic them. In this case, we're going here to the, to the main website. We go again to intelligence, threat landscape, threat actors, and from here you can go to filter by targeted industries. Well, we're focusing on the British government, so government and administration, and the targeted region is going to be the United Kingdom. Done. From here we can filter and see all the different threat actors that are targeting this specific industry in this specific region. So let's imagine that you as a red teamer has been contracted to uh, simulate an attack to a British infrastructure. In this case, we can go, for instance, to APT15, which is Chinese, and try to simulate their behavior. From here, you could get the description of the threat actor. From here, you can see that they're using phishing techniques to compromise networks of foreign ministries of European countries, in which that's why the United Kingdom is a suspended victim. From here, you can see all the different malware that they are using, so you can start mimic it. Or, for instance, if they're using any open source tool, you can also use it to try to mimic their behavior. You can see all the IOCs that are related to this uh, hacker group. And, of course, you can get here the TTPs. So from here, if you're thinking about, okay, how am I going to start 
to compromise their network well you've got here the hint phishing techniques so from here you can see that the initial access all the techniques that they're using normally so valid accounts cloud accounts so you could start looking for those cloud accounts that uh, uh, your customer is using external remote services or public facing applications so you could attack for instance their public webs also you could go into community and see all the references of this threat actor so you can study it more in depth and in case there were any comments from the community you could also uh, get value from them So, moving to the last page, we have to go into the conclusion. So, fit the collections and threat actors will help you when dealing with many IOCs. So, as Alexandra showed you before, you can, uh, when you have a huge amount of IOCs, more than 20, you can gather them into a single collection and apply them to Versatile, and you'll get all the commonalities and so on that they are sharing. In need of contextual info on a specific observable, so as we saw in the, in the example of the cell canalis use case, we could get information about a single IOC and get to even more IOCs, we can get the contextual information about that, what IOC, where does it come from, is it related to a specific threat actor, and so on. Attribution and victimology, as we could see, we now are integrating uh, the threat actors and the different victims, uh, be it specific industries or regions. And finally, keeping up to date with malware families, campaigns and threat actors. So you can start monitorizing the threat landscape using VT collections and threat actors. Thank you very much. Now I think it's time for the questions. Thank you. I'm checking the questions, Alexander. Hi, Jan. Um, do you mind if I get the first one? Yeah, sure. We've got a okay, few ones. Perfect. Okay. Uh, well, the first one is. Um, are all these new models support, uh, supported via VT API? Uh, everything that we launch, uh, everything that you can do through the web interface, you can also do it through the API. So yeah, of course you can uh, search for collections, uh, you can create collections, you can modify collections, you can do everything that you can do uh, in, the, in the web interface. You can do it also through the API. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Alexandra. Um, I may be able to answer the next one, which is when will collections be available for enterprise customers? Well, it is actually available for enterprise customers. It is both available for enterprise and for the web customers. So if you go again to the... Um, to the uh, top left corner uh, in the Parasitol land page, click on intelligence and into threat landscape, you'll be able to get to that point where you can see the collections and the threat actors. Okay, I can get the next one. And it is, uh, how can I get new IOCs added to collections? Uh, so we are working on a solution or a feature for uh, for you to be notified at any time a new uh, file or a new IOC is added to a collection. But by now you can only do that through the API, right? So the idea would be, for instance, to uh, map uh, all the IOCs that you have in a collection and time to time to check it in case there are new new IOCs included. And you can also check, for instance, the, the updated date, right? So if the last modification date is changed, you can use that also to, to get the time or yeah, to, uh, to fetch the data that is updated. 
Awesome. Thank you, Alex. Uh, I can go for the next one, which is, uh, do you provide these feeds in Stix 2.1? Um, yes, you can download them as a, a Stix format. Uh, if you go to the collection and go to export AOCs, you'll have uh, different options, a bunch of options, and you can just select the Stix one. I think Alexandra really showed it. So um, if you're not sure about where to go, you can just uh, go again, rewatch the webinar, and go to Alexandra's introduction, and you'll see. And we have another one here, a uh, new one, and it is of, oh, are IOCs automatically added to collection from the JARA rules? Yeah, uh, well, I believe I already talked uh, about this. So yeah, there are like two different ways to, to create, I mean, to have collections, right? The first one is for users to create them. And the other one is like an automatically uh, way to, to have this. So one of them is through, like one of the automatic ways is through Yara rules. So that, yeah, we, automatic, we automatically add uh, new IOCs based on Yara rules. Thank you, Alex. Uh, I, I think we have another one. Uh, where do TTPs come from? Well, um, this information, uh, that depends on what we're talking about. If we're talking about collections or we're talking about thread actors. Uh, when it comes to collections, um, the TTPs are taken from the sandbox detonations of those files and are aggregated there. Uh, same as uh, the commonalities, uh, the commonalities tab that we can see, but commonalities is more focused in static analysis details uh, as, but the TTPs are more focused on their actual behavior. And when we are talking about the threat actors, uh, those TTPs are associated uh, from industry standards like MITRE or MISP. Uh, here we have another one. Can I fetch reports in sticks format as well through API? So uh, if the question is about uh, samples reports or IOC reports, uh, like for instance, file report, uh, the answer is uh, that we don't really have that uh, now, but we will have it soon. So I can't give you dates, but yeah. And I think that's all right. I think we, uh, let me see. Are collections limited to 90 day retrospection? What is Threat Hunter Pro? Oh, well, really nice question. Um, when you check a collection, uh, it doesn't matter if it's 90 days um, old or more, because uh, a collection just includes IOCs um, that could have been uh, added in the past. Like, for instance, if I add now, if I create a collection and I, and I add an IOC, a hash or domain or whatever um, to that collection, in the next year, I'll be able to see it. And in the next two years, I'll be able to see it. Um, when you're talking about Threat Hunter Pro, that's a bit different uh, because with Threat Hunter Pro, what you'll be able to do is to both two intelligent searches, uh, which are aside from collection, uh, what you can do using search modifiers when looking for hashes, files, URLs, um, depending on specific um, parameters that you're looking for, for instance, uh, that have been uh, scanned by, by certain antivirus vendors and have been found malicious by a specific number or that they have been um, categorized as uh, this label uh, or that all this kind of information, but also uh, with the YAR rules. So if you Put the YAR rule in Retro Hunt with Red Hunter Pro instead of 90 days, you'll be able to get up to one year uh, back to the past. All the samples that match your your, your YAR rule up to a year. So it's a bit different from collection. Like Red Hunter Pro is focused on intelligence and hunting, and collection is another thing. Okay, thanks, Ima. And I I think that's all can you create private collections or cybersecurity communities? Okay. 
Well, so the idea is that right now, everything that you create, I mean, every collection that you create, it will be uh, public, right? It's not, I mean, by now we don't have the option for creating uh, private collections. Well, maybe in the future, I'm not sure, but yeah, by now it's not possible. Okay, how often are the collections updated? Is it an automated or manual process? Uh, that depends. There are some uh, collections that have been automated and they're doing OSINT and getting the samples from the internet. Other collections are created by persons like you and me, um, by analysts, and that depends on the investigation of that specific analyst. So it all depends. Okay, I don't know if we have something. What differentiates you from other cybersecurity communities? What's your objective as far as total organization? Well, that's that's more of a question to our uh, to, to to our boss, I think, or maybe to high leadership of this organization. But as part of Virusol, I think I would say, like personally, how we see Virusol is like a platform for a crowdsource intelligence. So everyone in the world would be able to benefit from the intelligence that everyone else is uploading to Virusol that uh, is being studied in Virusol from graphs from collections. That's why uh, we try uh, to um, share the graphs, to share the collections to all the community. So we can all, all benefit and study them and keep uh, getting ahead of the threat actors. So maybe Alexandra has another another point of view. Uh, not really. I totally agree. <laughs> Okay, I believe this is all right. Uh, okay, if not, I mean, you can reach out to us and uh, we can answer all your questions. So, yeah, Isma, I don't know if you want to say something else. Um, mm, let me see. I think we, we have a last one that has just been uh, submitted. Uh, are filters limited to the primary industry a threat actor targets or inclusive of all industries that threat actor targets? For example, with a threat actor who targets healthcare and retail be listed under both categories? Um, yes, and that works also for regions. So if you're looking for um, a threat actor that's targeting, uh, for instance, what we uh, just saw with the red right teaming use case, that it's targeting to the British government, you'll also see uh, all this list of threat actors. If you click on one of them, they don't normally just target one country, but a region or different countries. And so if you check for uh, the United Kingdom or India in that case uh, that we just saw, um, it would all be filtered in both. There's someone here. Uh, uh, has asked, thank you very much. Thanks to you for attending. Uh, it has been so fun and so great to have you all here listening to us. Okay, so I believe. One second. I think. New one. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And I think that when we can close this, uh, I don't see the option to go to threat landscape via intelligence, which you described. Who can I speak to correct the issue? In that case, um, that depends. If you're already a customer of Virus Shuttle, uh, you can directly go to your uh, account manager and tell them about this. Um, they will explain to you the best option that you may have uh, based on your current situation and so. And if you're not a customer, uh, you can uh, contact us directly by Virus Shuttle slash contact, or you can go to the land page and search at the footer for the contact uh, button. And from there, you can uh, write to us and we'll answer you about what you can do and what options you have. Where will the recording be posted? Um, here, like if you access through the same link, um, you'll be able to see the, the, the recording. 
So okay. we can... Yes, okay. we can close okay. now. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, we hope you liked it. You uh, and you found it useful, right? Because that's the point. And thank you for your time and happy hunting. Happy hunting, guys. Good evening or day or mo or night, wherever you are. <laughs>